<laughs> Tim, thanks so much for coming along and welcome Pleasure. on campus. It's been great of you to come along. And of course, this is part of our Great Minds series, so you are one of our great minds, which is great. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> um, could I just start by asking you about BBC Worldwide and can you describe the role of BBC Worldwide and how it differs from the rest of the corporation, perhaps focusing on the global element of that? Well, we're the commercial arm of the BBC, mm -hmm. so BBC gets £3.6 billion of revenue from the licence fee in the UK. Separately, I raise a um, billion pounds of revenue by doing a few things, selling our programmes around the world and making programmes with people around the world running channels, so different TV channels. We've got about 123 ch channels around the world. Fantastic. We then make TV programs. So if you take an entertainment show like Strictly Come Dancing, which is big in the UK, uh, you'll see it as Dancing with the Stars in the States mm -hmm. or Jalak in India. We'll, we'll make those programs, not just sell them. We'll, we'll sell you the format and make them. We have licensing businesses. We sell advertising on our channels around the world. We have theme parks. Um, rides that we do and licensing and merchandising so that that's our business fantastic it sounds like you get very involved in it as well will we see you on Strictly or anything like uh, that no I won't be <laughs> appearing on Strictly the occasional tough interview of, uh, like this not yeah like, well, um, really tough but, of course but, yeah. but occasionally you know we'll do we, we will go front of camera but really you know it's, it's about the writers and the various yeah. people who make the wonderful things like natural history programming yes, yeah those fantastic. big natural history landmarks we fund about 70 percent of those from the commercial side of the BBC okay. because they're going around the world, they're making millions of pounds for Fantastic. the Fantastic, the because they are brilliant, aren't they? And the, the skill that goes on within that, you know, the real technology, which is another question I'll ask you a bit later on, but Great. we'll go on to that. So it's clear that BBC Worldwide is a strong, respect, respected and profitable yeah. brand internationally. So you've talked earlier about the making the programmes, the mm. fact that they fund mm. everything, but is there another particular element of that that makes it so successful and so strong? Well, at the moment, just, just for numbers, so I said we're a billion, 1.1 billion revenue business in pounds, so I know, uh, you, know you can do the, the exchange rate yes. calculations, but, and we make a margin of about 15%, so we make about 160 million pounds profit. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of you know, what makes us work is like many businesses, we're, we're very focused on a being the BBC and the high quality programming. So yes. a lot of talk about mobile, pay television, free to air. Mm. I mean, I'm gonna say something a little shocking. We're not a mobile company. We're not a 50 inch screen company. We're a content yes. company. We yeah. make great stuff. If you wanna watch it on a mobile or we'll make it perfect for you on a mobile. But our main business is great high quality content. And above anything, you know, even above making money, it's about building the reputation of the BBC. I think great companies don't just look for the next 50,000 of revenue. Apple, you don't just see them do anything to make a buck. No. They, they have a quality about them, they, and they're the companies we admire. So worldwide, is very much about building the reputation of the BBC around the world, and then we make mm. some, you know, sustainable financial return. That's our second objective. And our third one is to create somewhere where people want to work. Yeah, and it's fantastic to hear that, you know, the, making the great content, because that's the product, isn't it, that goes in there. So it's, it's fantastic every, it's to everything. hear it. Moving slightly on to student life, given yeah. that we are an educational provider. Yeah. At uh, London School of Business and Finance, our students are extremely culturally diverse, and we have students from over 150 com uh, countries on campus. Yeah. As such, our curriculum is very international in its whole makeup. And in your opinion, what are the advantages to businesses in hiring talent that has exposure to an appreciation for international business? I think it's, it's not even a, a kind of debatable question, mm. this one. I mean, unless you've got a truly diverse workforce, you cannot respond to the market. Mm. You can't actually develop things that are going to win in the market. I'm someone who's worked, I've lived abroad, I think I've traveled to now 50, 60 countries. Mm -hmm. And a few things I've learned is, one is leadership is not about a particular style, mm -hmm. shape, size, look. It's to do with the quality of you as an individual to lead the organization. You, you could be quiet or loud, it doesn't matter, but you absolutely um, need to focus on not those superficial things, but knowing your audience. Mm -hmm. and to know your audience and know people out there, you have to have people that are close to the ground. You have to have a diverse workforce. I mean, it's ludicrous to think that, you know, a few people from the same background can, can go mm. after global markets now. It, it, it's just, this is not a corporate initiative. It's really important this. It's not yeah. something you, you have, have to do because someone's told you it's, the, it's a good thing yeah. to do. It is a good thing to do. 
it's a it's an absolute imperative in the market you have to build diverse teams never hire in your own image mm. hire different people it's essential now mm. it's not it's just not it's not something you can kind of debate. That, that's really brilliant to hear because obviously you know being here in London with students coming in from all over the world it's fantastic to hear that and the organizations that you like with you're working with just go forward with that whole process. Which I is think fantastic. it's a big change for organizations yeah. that by the way to, to really understand the advantages of that Absolutely. And, and be global companies but I yeah. think as an organization with a lot of international students you'd, you, don't, you should feel confident that that's where the, that where the world is heading Absolutely. Uh, and, and UK businesses need that international expertise. Mm. So moving on into your work with the UK TI, mm. you've been ch a champion for the UK creative sector in helping promote the sector globally. How can higher education institutions and in particular business schools help in promoting this particular message? I suppose the other bit within that is what role does business education play with the creativity uh, industry itself? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting topic um, and the appeal for students to work in, there's nothing in my mind better than working in the creative mm. industries, whether it's architecture, design, it's a wonderful thing. Mm. I think there's been, it, certainly in the UK, there's been a slightly uh, kind of uh, a, a difficult thing, which is, well, we've got these creative types and we've got the business professionals mm. and they never meet. I tell you, across the world, that's not necessarily mm. what's happening. Uh, yes, you have you know, creative directors and brilliant creative minds, but you also have leaders who have got creative feelings, they're, set, they're good at de de developing creative mm. people, they understand the creative world, but they're brilliant business people, you mm. know, they're brilliant business people, but they value creativity. Mm. And I think um, what we need from institutions, and people like myself need to be out there talking about this, is people who really can give people creative space mm -hmm. and love creativity, realize that they're not gonna be able to document everything and find everything perfectly contained mm. like, a, like a sheet of numbers. But they also can br bring a professionalism, can make sure businesses are well run, can mm. find how to get money to, to help a really good designer, mm. can fund, in my life, I'm always trying to fund, if you had a great script for a TV drama, you would come to us, we'd try and fund it, make sure it makes sense mm -hmm. financially, and commercially do the best with it. That, those skills, I think, we're, we're getting better. Mm. There's, but those people who can blend, by the way, the, the creative feelings and being able to build those types of businesses with a true professional expertise are gold dust in the marketplace. Mm. They're gold dust. I think we've had the, the US have done that better than some of Europe. I think we're heading to a place where we're gonna need those skills all the time. In the digital businesses, exactly the same. I suppose one of the questions I'd ask in addition to that is, so with that creativity, because creativity hates being restricted, mm. do you accept failure in the BBC then for that basis or do you, or do you go down the business to side to of it? Yeah, Totally. I mean, yeah. I mean, talk to anyone in the movie yeah. business, talk to anyone in the TV business, most things don't succeed. Mm. That's pretty... But, but it's really know, welcoming tough. to hear that uh, because and, I think and it's You need to have faith, you need to, your mm. economics need to be ready for the long term. Mm. You need to have a, uh, a real sense of long term I'm in this to, to support people mm. and go for it. And I, I think education can play a brilliant part in understanding mm. this. By the way, it's not mad risks. It's not just throwing money and saying, no. you know, maybe something will happen. You can plan this. It's you sort can of an plan informed it. risk. There's an informed, smart yeah. way of dealing yeah. with risk, yeah. which people like myself have to do daily. Fantastic. Thank you for that. And I guess that sort of leads me quite nicely into innovation, because mm. uh, the question would be around how has innovation driven growth and how will it continue to drive growth? So we've talked about technologies, mm -hmm. but innovation is another part of that, not just about technology. Mm -hmm. So how does that drive the growth? Well, cl the clearly, worldwide? innovation is everything. In, in our business, we're, we're utterly dependent on uh, not only innovation in programming, but new ideas coming through. I mean, that we, we get, we, we're feeding through all the time new ideas, um, but it's also about refreshing things that have been going on for, for a long, I mean, mm. we have a program called Doctor Who that's been going for Fantastic. 50 years, just had its <laughs> biggest year after yeah. 50 years. It's not tired, mm. but it literally we have to, I mean, the lead character regenerates <laughs> and it's, it's not a bad kind of metaphor for analogy yes. for, you know, what a business, it ju we just need to regenerate businesses mm. all the time. I mean, the idea you can just sit there, I mean, I, I think we all know this, but innovation is, is absolutely the core mm. of what we do. We're, we're thinking of new ideas all the time. I think you need a culture that allows new ideas to thrive mm. and people don't feel 
inhibited by that. I love the Doctor Who analogy. I think it's fantastic. Being an avid Doctor Who watcher no, all my I'm life. I'm glad to hear. <laughs> so this, is, this question is a difficult question because it's about you. Mm. So within all of this, massive organisations and some fantastic things, some excellent products within there, you're leading this. So what type of leader are you, would you say? I think you answered it in part in an earlier response, mm. but it would be really good to hear what type of leader you feel you are and what attributes you feel um, are required in a leader mm. in, in this type of... Mm. particular role? I, I, I think uh, in the type of roles I'm doing, I mean, the, the first thing I'd say is the, the p key people to answer the first bit of your question is those people working for me. Mm -hmm. Seriously, it, it's not what you think of yourself is great, but it's the people around you and how they... So let me put they, that back to and, you then. If, if, I w if, if one of your employees was in the room then, what would they say about you? Well, hopefully, I, I think they would say that, firstly, uh, the, the absolute core requirements of leadership are met. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what are those? Okay, I think the first is a simple, clear, I mean, it's all the other stuff, but a simple, clear direction. Okay, do yep. we know where okay. we are heading? And mm -hmm. we have a simple vision. Can I explain it to someone on the street in, you know, simple layman's, is it, is it clear? Mm -hmm. And within BBC Worldwide, I think we have a very clear strategy. We know what we're trying to do. Okay, the second is, have you created a culture where there is a spirit of generosity there is people who are able to do their best work. Mm -hmm. I feel very sure, you only get one life. Mm -hmm. I really believe this, you, you've only got one shot, so you better make it rewarding. And the final thing is an environment which you're learning. Because mm -hmm. I think good people want to learn. Mm. And hopefully, as a leader, that's what I can set up for people. Mm -hmm. um, we could talk in more detail on this because I'm passionate about yeah, it. I but, but I think <laughs> I think they're the, they're the big things. Once they're in place, you can begin to move on from there. Okay, fantastic. Talked in your response there about global talent mm. um, and and uh, providing an environment where people thrive and feel valued. Um, as a global organisation, how do you deal with local ta talent? Well, we're recruiting in many countries around the world, and what you try and do, I think, and again, it's not this is no surprise, is we try and keep their local knowledge and really keep the, that spirit mm. of localism and uh, being a bit of a local entrepreneur. I, I, we're a very big company, but we try to feel mm. small. Sounds fantastic to hear that because it's really welcoming because often you do get organisations that just want a particular clone style of mm. um, individual working. So I'm sure your colleagues feel really valued by what you do. So moving on to sort of controversial issues, the BBC have gone through its fair share of challenges. Yeah. You obviously had, had to head up the whole yeah, of BBC, the whole BBC for, for, yeah, a while, for, one, yeah. for a while. So I suppose the question around that is, when it comes to ethical business practices, how does the BBC worldwide ensure that ethics and standards are maintained within the organisation? And what are the commercial benefits of mm. having such strong mm. standards? Well, we, I mean, we do have you know, uh, a really strong set of policies around ethical sourcing, etc. But why don't we take a step back? And, and I think the biggest part of this question is a, 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 a sense of what's changed for organizations, mm. which is, you know what you have to be comfortable with? The truth. Mm. Okay, we're in, an, in the old days, kind of companies went about their business and they presented something to you as a customer. That's changed. The world's much more porous, it's much more open. We're online, we disclose more info. And this is very healthy. It's been very painful mm. for a lot of organizations. But it's a much more mm. open place. Mm. And the customer wants to know more about the company. So you tell me about what you do. Mm. It's great to hear that openness and transparency is coming through in such a large organisation, because mm. it must be very easy in a large organisation for things to get, not buried, but you know, sort of hidden away or somebody saying, oh, it's not my responsibility, but actually it sounds mm. as though everybody's open and they know what's going on and I, you can I, sit there. I, I wouldn't say, I mean, we've got work to do like everyone else, but this is a massive change for leaders. Mm. I think historically, I've been, having led a lot of crises, mm. some of it well, some of it not so well, is your first reaction is how do I defend my position? Mm -hmm. I think we've seen through the last few years a big change, which is if you get your position right, you don't have to get mm. into defending your position, mm. you just explain your position. Mm. And that becomes relaxing. Mm. Uh, that is a, a, a change that a lot of organisations mm. are going through. Fantastic. One last question, if mm. I might, Tim. Um, are there any words of encouragement you'd have for students and graduates going through the processes at the moment uh, and, and going into the workplace after? Well, after I would study? say those people um, uh, who are coming through the system now, one is there's never been a greater demand for global, smart, global talent that, that feels 
part of a new world in which, you know, I, I think we would hire from anywhere, from all places. So it's going to be less formulaic, hopefully, mm. than it was. Mm. I, think, I think we're more open to talent. I think people are realizing that talent can come from different places. Um, and I think that's great. Mm -hmm. The second thing is I think there's a lot of change. There's an enormous amount of change. And people who have been in jobs for 30 years fixed find that incredibly threatening. Mm -hmm. If you're a student, it's great news. Mm -hmm. There's growth to be had. There's new businesses growing out there. There's lots of change. It will be unsettling for everyone, but the opportunities will come through mm -hmm. that. Certainly in my world, you know, those people who are learning code a while back or those people are learning how to run creative businesses, you know, we're seeing them grow and take opportunities mm -hmm. like never before. It's incredibly exciting. It's incredibly, I think if you're interested in the media or interested in the creative industries, I would say this is a golden age. A and does that translate internationally then as well? Yeah, I, I think it does. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that, um, I don't want to sound, make it all sound easy. It's mm -hmm. not, it's going to be really hard. I think there's going to be, the best talent will always thrive and it's going to be, you, you know, people are going to have to hustle mm -hmm. and get cracking. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the growth of the creative industries around the world, they're forecast to grow five odd percent a year, mm -hmm. if I get to the numbers. Um, we're seeing huge growth across Asia in terms of um, pay TV, which, which in turn means, mm -hmm. you know, television program making, digital businesses, look at Alibaba yeah. in China, vast businesses being grown. They're hiring people, they need great people. Mm -hmm. That's going to keep going. Look at, look at Hollywood. The money it's spending on movies now, spending money in China. All this is happening. They're going to need not only kind of people who have just lived in London, they're going to need people from around the mm. world and elsewhere to run those businesses. Mm. I know I do. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you very much for, for, for talk, talking to us. It's been fantastic. And I think the insights that you've brought are really helpful to us. So thank you very Good. much. Absolute fantastic. pleasure. Thank Thanks you. very much.